Scrappers, who was here. So this video is part three in the series of gold recovery from IC chips. Um, some people are going to ask, well, why don't you put this all in one video? The answer is very simple, because I want you to realize that this is, uh, it's not a, a quick process. It's something that requires a lot of work um, and a lot of material. So I, before people even attempt to try this, I want you to make sure, I want to make sure that you understand that. Um, so again, we started with about two pounds of IC chips. Uh, this next step in the process, we've already incinerated them. So now what we're going to do is uh, basically uh, crush them. Uh, I used a rock tumbler. Um, has these little drums here. I split it up into half. Um, I used some uh, ball bearings in there to you know, help crush it up. You don't need to do that. If you did a really good job incinerating them, they should come apart fairly easy anyway. Uh, but regardless of how you break them apart, this next step is the same. So what we want to do is we want to sift out the different components. Alright, so right here I've just got a, a regular metal sieve, all right, and I'm going to take my rock tumbler tube with uh, the IC chips, or what's left of them. All right. Just going to start putting it in there and sifting out the powder. Now you're going to find a few things when you do this. All right, you should be left with some whatever IC chips that were not incinerated enough, which is fine. You can just throw them back into the pot later in your next batch. You're going to have uh, this black powder, which is what all the gold bonding wires should be in. So you want to make sure you, you don't lose any of that. And also what you're going to find sift this out here and I'll show you. So if we look in here, what you're going to find is a lot of these uh, silicon wafers. These were things that were in the middle of those IC chips. Uh, that's what all the gold bonding wires attach to. Those can contain precious metals, so you want to keep those aside. So you're going to have the black powder, uh, IC chips that still need to be incinerated, the silicon wafers, there's still going to be remnants of the legs, which should be magnetic. <clears throat> so you're going to want to make sure that before you process this black powder, that you um, like put it in a jar uh, with uh, a magnet on the outside of the lid and shake it up. I'll show you that process in a little bit. Um, that'll get those out that way. What you should be pretty much just left with is black powder and uh, gold bonding wires. Alright, so that's... That's what you're dealing with right there, is that, that powder. That's, that's where the bulk of your gold is going to be. Right, so I'm holding the tripod here with one hand while trying to do this with the other. It's not easy. Alright, so we're going to continue to sift that out. And then everything that has not been broken down, I'm just putting back in this other um, rock tumbler barrel. I've got two different size sifters. Uh, this one's got a fairly large screen, kind of like what you would see on like a, uh, a screen for a window or something. And this one's a little bit finer sieve, so that gets a lot more of the, the smaller silicon wafers and stuff like that out. So then what you're left with is powder that still has stuff in it. So what you're going to want to do is take a jar and Put some of that powder in there, and on the top I've got two hard drive magnets, two neodymium magnets. So if you just shake it a little bit, you're going to find that you've got a lot more of those pins that are sticking in there up to the magnets. If you can see that in there. Now I tap them out because um, when they clump up like that, they tend to trap some of that dust in there. Uh, and I just want to make sure that no gold is getting stuck in there. So, tap, tap, tap. Alright. Then you just remove the magnet. And the, gold, and the um, little legs fall off. Keep doing that until nothing else pops up.
All right, so here's where things can vary quite a bit. Um, at this point, um, th there's a whole bunch of different ways you can get the gold out of that powder. Um, uh, Indeed It Does, I believe, has uh, some videos where he processes them. Um, he'll take the powder as is right now and just bring it right to the aqua regia. Um, I don't use that. So what I need to do is separate the gold bonding wires from the powder. Now thankfully gold is heavier than the powder so I can simply use water. Um, there's a little risk of losing some gold but not a whole lot um, you know, simply because gold is so much heavier that it'll stay to the bottom especially if you use you know a very um, light flow of water. So I'm gonna take you into my kitchen and take a look at that. All right, so here's what I got. I've got um, a catch pan, something that uh, I'm going to put this bucket into and start the water flowing into this. And what that's going to do is it's going to make all the powder and stuff, the, um, the, the ash and dust, which is lighter. It's going to flow up and over and into this pan. And then this pan is going to flow over into the drain. All right. The theory here is that the gold is, because it's so heavy, and any other metal that's left in there, it should stay in the bottom of this bucket, but if any does get out, it'll get caught in this bucket. So we just need to you know, let it run for a while, um, you know, stir it up a little bit, and, and then you know, let the gold settle back down, let it run again, um, until we're left with just you know, dense material at the bottom. Now it's going to be important that you use a little bit of Dawn dish liquid. You want to make sure that um, the surface tension um, doesn't keep any gold on top. So I'm just going to put a drop in there now. Let me just run a very low flow. This is the jar that I used. I'm going to make sure that I rinse all the black powder off that. So this method is like an adaptation of um, what another YouTuber, Geo, does, and he says he's tested the, um, the, the tailings, I guess, basically, um, and he's not found any significant gold values whatsoever. So I, I trust this guy. I trust he knows what he's doing. He's been doing it for a while. Um, he's a, a wealth of knowledge. So. If he says this is an efficient way to do it without losing hardly any gold, I believe him. But inside the bucket, you can see some of the powder is really dry on top and it's floating. So what I want to do is make sure that I stir this up so that nothing is floating. So I've got that slurry nice and mixed up. Just gonna bring the water level up to the top. Make sure that's really nice and it's as thin as I can get it. Alright. So now I'm gonna give it a minute just to let any gold that I might have stirred up settle back down. And then I'm gonna turn the water on a trickle. see that the color in there but we're starting to see some of the gold bonding wires um, down to um, yeah, not a whole lot of material left in the, in the bottom of the bucket zoom out here you can see that it's just just a little bit down in there I've also got my my gold pan um, I'm gonna switch to that in a minute um, but keep in mind I'm not expecting more than a couple grams of gold in here and there's also going to be other things in there like um, uh, copper legs from you know, the IC chips and all kinds of other stuff. So keep that in mind. 
All right, so this is where I'm pretty much going to wrap up the video. Um, what you are going to be left with is your like tailings pan over here. There's going to be a lot of sediment in there. I don't recommend dumping that down your drain um, because it's heavy and it'll most likely you know sit in your drain for a long time and plug things up. You don't want that. So what I've got left here is my gold pan, um, which has uh, most of the heavy material that's left. Um, I like using the gold pan because it has those riffles in it. They kind of added insurance against losing any gold. Excuse me. Alright, so if you look in here, you're going to see. I don't know my count. You see the gold there? The gold bonding wires? If I don't shine the light directly on it. Alright, so there's all kinds of you know bits of gold in there and stuff. Um, there's also going to be some more silicon wafers. Um, there's, I mean, there, there's just gold everywhere in there. But I mean, it looks like a lot, but it's probably only like like two grams. Um, I'm not going to be finishing this video by showing you um, the end product because that's going to take a while, and I like to save it up so that I have enough to process and make it worth you know, doing all at once. Um, but something else that I want to show you is inside my bucket. What you're going to notice is if you do this method is that there's going to be some stuff at the bottom of the bucket that's not going to want to come out because <laughs> it's super heavy. In that corner down there, that's like pure tiny gold bonding wires. Um, now keep in mind there's going to be other things in there. There's still going to be you know, copper and some magnetic stuff in there. Um, so how you take that out, that is, I leave that up to you. All right, so my method for the rest of this, it, it's by no means my claiming it's the best method, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the rest of that and soak it in hydrochloric. Just let it soak for a while. Get any crap that's in there out. Um, I'm gonna filter it. And then what should be left is just the gold and the silicone. Now at that point, I'm just gonna use uh, hydrochloric acid and bleach to dissolve the gold and then precipitate it out with sodium and a bisulfite. Um, I have other videos on that stuff so if you want to you know, check back on my channel um, you'll see the, the information for that there. Um, and that's it. So I'm not going to give you a yield. Um, the biggest reason for that is because it's kind of pointless. Um, in order to give you an accurate yield or accurate yield information all the chips would need to be the same, and they're not. They're from different brands, different ages, so th there's just no way to make um, a number that's really reliable. But it is, you know, in my opinion, worth it. Um, to be honest, I spent about an hour um, cleaning out some of the uh, the ash and sediment. Um, that's it. So if you have any questions, make sure you uh, put them down there in the comments. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Um, and also, make sure you check out on October 26th at 7 p.m. I'm going to be doing my first ever live stream. Um, so you can ask any questions that you want. I'll do my best to answer them. And I'm going to have Bob Gill from Gill Skills there. He's going to be helping me out. Uh, and also answering any questions that you might have. So make sure you tune in. And see you all later.